Partagus, since its introduction in 2014, Partagus 1845 Extra Fuerte has won critical acclaim and a devoted legion of fans. Flawless construction and full-bodied flavor are the hallmarks of this rich, dimensional cigar that features prevalent notes of wood and coffee. Made with a unique blend spanning three continents, Partagus 1845 Extra Fuerte is the perfect choice for any cigar smoking occasion. A.J. Fernandez Cigars, makers of the San Latano, one of the most talked about cigars in recent years, is now offering a groundbreaking line extension, the San Latano Bull. The San Latano Bull features an extensively aged and hearty core of Nicaraguan long fillers nestled beneath an attractive Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper. Housed in a cedar sleeve which depicts the outline of a bull, only solidifies this cigar as a full-flavored cigar. Removing the sleeve reveals a box-pressed cigar with a beautiful, oily, and smooth chocolate brown wrapper. The San Latano Bull burns nice and neat as it issues columns of smoke hitting you with a wall of spice followed by leather and cedar. This densely packed cigar intensifies in deep, rich flavors and becomes a flavor bomb halfway through, only getting better with each passing draw. Strong yet smooth and perfectly balanced A.J. Fernandez, who many have called a tobacco prodigy, has somehow pushed the already spectacular San Latino line of cigars forward with the Bull. A.J. Fernandez challenges you to take on the Bull, Cigar Snob's number eight cigar of the year for 2014. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. We've got our next special guest on for an interview. Well, why don't you uh, introduce our next special guest? Yeah, so, um, you know, actually it's kind of funny because... Um, I had, I had a, a couple of years ago, I was talking to Cigar Dojo, and he had mentioned, have you ever tried the, the Crassier cigars? And I said, no, I haven't. And I was actually in Florida at the time, and then I actually took a trip down to Eric Espinosa's office, and in, in walks this gentleman and introduces himself as Santana Diaz from the Crassier cigars. Um, and he handed me one of his cigars, and I just kind of fell in love with it. Um, and, you know, Santana has been a, a great supporter. He's come on board now, obviously, as a sponsor. Um, he's been a good friend. And we want to welcome him to the Stogie Geek Show. Um, before I kind of turn it over, I just want to tell folks, Santana's given a bunch of great giveaways tonight. Um, so what I'm going to tell folks is you need to listen to this segment carefully. We're going to put some questions. And at the end of the show, there'll be some questions. And there's some really fantastic prizes. Um, and we'll go through some of those. Um, but... Thank you to Santana. Santana, Will Cooper, and Paul Asadorian here. Welcome to the Stogie Geek Show. Thank you for having me, guys. Santana, how did you get your start in the cigar industry? Um, well, we started in 2007 and um, here in the United States. Uh, we, uh, I got together with this guy. His name is uh, Mr. Ferrer. Uh, he's from uh, Cuba, but he lived in Costa Rica. So uh, I met him through my father, and um, we got together, and uh, I went to Costa Rica, and uh, he had a factory in his house, which is uh, the 512 address, which is the selection of 512 that we um, uh, released earlier this year on the team boxes. And um, when we met, we started bringing some cigars, and automatically our friendship started developing and, and that's how we started it. Um, so Santana, for those are that uh, may not be familiar with the Crossier Cigars, tell us about some of the uh, the brands and the, the blends that you have in the line. Well, the line has uh, the Imperial Class Vintage. We recently added a new size to this line, which is the White Toro. It's a 58 by 5 by 1 8. It is a, um, this line has about six sizes right now. And uh, you can find all the green gauges from 50 all the way down to 60. So uh, this is where you find in the Cossier Cigars all the, uh, uh, the big ring gauges. This is a box of the white door. It smokes really good. It's a rubber from Costa Rica. Uh, we're growing these wrappers up there in the mounds. And, and, uh, and which, which line is that again, Santana? This is the Crossier Imperial Glass Vintage. Okay. 
the Imperium class vintage is a, uh, it's a name that I found in 2009 for this line. It's a medium body, and uh, it has a lot of sweetness to the blend. And the, so, the blend, is it primarily Costa Rican, or like what's the mixture of, uh, is it Costa Rican tobacco? It's a Costa Rican wrapper with an Ecuadorian uh, uh, binder, and it has some Dominicans and Costa Rican flavors. And what do you find unique about the Costa Rican tobacco? I mean, it's not one of the most popular uh, types of tobacco out there, but certainly it's becoming more common uh, as time goes has gone on. Yeah, well, mostly, you know, what we use from Costa Rica is this wrapper and some binders. We recently uh, uh, growing some Sumatra that is heading our way really soon. We uh, did a first crop uh, last year. And uh, we use it as a binder in this can, and it's working it pair really well with the blend. So, what, uh, what, 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 what was that? Hold on, what was that can? Hold that can up before that looked really cool. Yeah, this is the um, the can that we did this year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it comes in about six sizes, too. And uh, here you can find uh, a 44 ring gauge, uh, for an Agorda 46, uh, and then the Mosso, which is a 48 by 6. And, and, and uh, which, which blend is that? This is a Havana, Ecuadorian Havana, mm -hmm. Costa Rican binder, the Sumatra. And what's the, what's the brand on that? What's the, the name of that one, if people want to look for it? So it's Flo de De Crozier uh, by Santana and Ferrer. Which is my associate Jose Ferrer. Yeah, that's what I'm smoking right now. That's a really great blend. I really this is the second one that I've had in this. It's a great medium bodied smoke. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I really I really enjoyed that cigar too, Santana. What you know, in terms of you went with a can actually, which you, and you're you're we'll get into this a little more because you're really known for your packaging, which is which is probably some of the best I've seen in the industry. What made you decide to go with a can um, for it? Well, this was presented to me by my uh, partner Ferrer. You know, I didn't, uh, I didn't, uh, never thought about doing um, delivering cigars in cans at all, but. Uh, he presented it to me, and I didn't like the idea. But uh, along the way, we started delivering uh, some ideas, like adding the tea liner inside and this beautiful paper that we put outside, folding the paper, and uh, it worked. I mean, we presented it, and 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 it was unique. You see, you know, it, it became a unique project, and uh, it worked. But the idea came from uh, my associate. So the, the cigar, the floor, the floor de, de Corsier, um, it's actually called the Selection 512. What's the significance of the 512? Yeah, 512 is the, uh, the number of where uh, my partner lives right now. When I met him, the factory was in his house. Uh, we were running about eight pairs. So, uh, you know, we decided to... Uh, put this number as a designation of recognizing where we create these the crossier lines. And uh, the selection, it becomes a selection due to the wrappers. And uh, that's pretty much it. Santana, oh, sorry, do you find with the can, does that, um, does it help you or does it put you at a disadvantage or pretty much the same as cigars that are distributed in boxes? Like how is it for the retailer to display the cigars when they're distributed in the can? Well, I, you know, I created a display that it holds three cans. Mm -hmm. And it's very unique because you can uh, uh, hang, you can bring it, you can hang this uh, uh, device, this uh, holder, uh, anywhere in the humid without taking any space. Uh, so um, they took it, you know, they pretty much say, okay, that display will work. 
No, I mean, I, I understood that the cans, you couldn't display it because the angle, the 30 degree angles, in, you know, the shops have in the humidors. So now this is a display, as you guys can see. And it has a device at the back that you can hang it inside the humidor. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's great. It's great because, yeah, in, in areas where sometimes there's not shelves, it, it's a way because sometimes those cans may not go on the shelf. That's a way you, you put that in the humidor, hang that up, and you're, you're ready to go with that. Yeah, it brings, uh, you know, it brings a unique way of delivering the, um, these cans. And uh, at the same time, it brings more money into the humidor of these retailers. You know, everybody knows about the space problems that we right. have in our industry. So this will solve the problem. For the cans, and uh, but uh, as far as just pretty much saying dividing the brands comes to different ways of delivering the cigars or price points and stuff like that. That's what we call the Flo de Decrocier. Flo de Decrocier, that's the logo. You receive. I mean, you're gonna see more of that in years to come. Uh, and we decided that these lines are going to be uh, more inexpensive because the way we uh, we can deliver this, uh, I mean, usually zero boxes are very unique, but they're expensive at the same time. So uh, these cans, uh, we can bring the MSRP down uh, due to the packaging. Mm. Packaging is... Uh, it's a, it's a big cost to, to our products. Are the, Santana, are the cans cheaper uh, than a, a, most of the boxes that are available out there? Yes. Way cheaper. Way cheaper. Interesting. I didn't wow. know that. I didn't either. That's really cool. Um, do you find that um, it's a better way to package than the boxes? Well, not really. Mm. I mean, a cigar box is a cigar box. A zero box is a zero box. You know, I mean... Traditionally, cigar boxes are the way to deliver the cigars. Mm -hmm. They taste better, and uh, uh, it's a tradition. I mean, traditionally, you uh, you used to see boxes, not things. Even though uh, things were used in the past, mm -hmm. you know, since the 1850s, uh, it was introduced in metal, uh, metal tin boxes. I mean, I mean metal tin cans. And uh, those brands were like cheap brands in a way, more affordable, I would say. But no, I mean, they age well, even though our cans, uh, they vacuum seal. Uh, this is all the part of this can that we're not saying that the cigars can breathe, even though we punch the cellophane so that cigars can breathe. And release all the toxics or the ammonias remaining, and they can improve the aging. Uh, but at the same time, this can also they breathe. I can tell you that secret, but there's a hole somewhere. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. I notice. I notice on your cellophane. In fact, I have some here from the, the cigar that I lit up. That it actually does have some holes in it. I've never seen that. I've actually never seen that before. I'm a, I never, I mean, until he said that, yeah. I'm looking at the Lancero. I wouldn't have noticed it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, since I use zero boxes, and everybody knows about this, uh, all my cigars were naked. I mean, they stay naked in some of the brands. Uh, but I came up with this idea because I'm not going to change my packaging. I'm not going to get rid of my cedar. Uh That's just not going to happen. That's a signature for our brands. Uh, the cigars age well in that wood, and uh, it creates this flavor profile. It's a signature for our brands. So I decided to punch the cello. Uh, uh, and matter of fact, right now we're working on, for 2016, we're going to be punching a lot of cell fans in different ways. And you're going to see all these uh, decorative lines in cellophane with black codes because now we can, the cigars can get the cedar and they can breathe out. And at the same time, they can be protected from, you know, any damages. So, yep, it was a good idea that, you know, we came out with. 
we get a lot of questions, Santana, from our audience. You know, when they're when they have cigars, they buy cigars, and they have cellophane. You know, there's always the debate if they should be on or off. By punching these, the cellophane is this something where maybe people, if they want to leave the cellophane on, it's a, it's a better option for them. Would you say? It all depends. I mean, if you have a humidor, a personal humidor, you may want to get them out of the cellophane. Remember, cellophane is petroleum. It's a, it's a chemistry, plastic is petroleum. I mean, time, it will deteriorate, you know. I mean, the, the chemistry, you can see uh, uh, the plastic turns yellow. Uh, you see a lot of cigars out there, ink cellophane. The people age it ink cellophane, and they, they turn out brown or, 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 or that's the toxic from the tobacco. That's the ammonias and all the compounds on the chemistry of the sleeves that are being released and they don't have a way to go. So uh, at the same time, if cellophane is deteriorating and if you smoke one of those cigars, you're gonna notice these uh, chemical flavors to it. So I, rec I mean, my recommendation would be, when you buy a cigar, get them out of the cellophane. The cellophane is the enemy of the tobacco leaf. That's for sure. Yeah, I, I think the argument that um, a lot of us have, and certainly, you know, myself here in the studio, for example, where, where we maintain a humidor, and I was just commenting before the show how, you know, we talk about spring cleaning, or as often as you would clean your garage as every once in a while, is how I tended to clean out my humidor. With the one here in the studio, because there's so much, so many cigars going in and out, uh, with samples and review cigars and gifts and giveaways and things like that. Um, I, it's like a weekly task for me to, to clean up my humidor and organize it. And in doing that, if a cigar is not in cellophane, it runs a much higher risk of being damaged, especially in my humidor. And I think a lot of people's humidors at home uh, as well. So in that sense, it does serve its purpose. But I, I totally hear what you're saying. I totally buy into the theory that a cigar does need to, uh, to breathe. Uh, a lot of people will cut, you know, the ends off of their cellophane uh, so the cigar can breathe, but still offer some protection as well. So I think that's important. Uh, you know, there's it's a double-edged sword, sort of. Yeah, you want your cigars to improve. You know, and time makes the makes the trick. Mm. And the blend will keep improving. So if you have not locked up in a cellophane, and the option, I mean, the the, the air doesn't get to it. Even though you have to open your humidor once in a while, every two or three weeks, open it up, you know, leave it open for a couple of hours, and then close it down again. It helps the blends. Mm, that's to, interesting. To this, uh, all these uh, ammonia and different compounds of chemistry from the tobacco leaf. Mm. Yeah, no, I totally, I totally agree. I need to do that more often with my humidors at home as well. Will, do you have more questions for Santana? Yeah, so I'm actually smoking uh, Santana's newest cigar, and it's the uh, the Crossier Selection 512 Lancero. Why don't you talk a little about this cigar? I'm really enjoying this Lancero. Yeah, this Lancero, we released this Lancero at the show. I have the box here, so viewers can see it. It's, it was a limited release for this year at the IPCPR. We just came out with. 200 boxes for this year, and they sold out. Everything is sold out already. Uh, the development of these brands is going to be a thousand boxes every year. The boxes are going to have numbers of the year and box number. Uh, uh, these, uh, the reason why it's a thousand boxes a year is because we only have a couple of rollers who can roll these and sell us the way we want to roll it. Uh, uh, so based on that, we limited the uh, the line to to a thousand boxes a year, which is going to be twenty thousand cigars. Uh, the wrapper is very selective. It's a selection of the wrapper. We are selecting this wrapper because the Lancero is a seven and a half inch. So uh, you need that size wrapper, very clean wrapper, and so we presented these Lancero like that. Uh, so. Um, as far as the blend, we're not, we're not revealing what the binder is. That's going to remain a secret. Even though I hate keeping secrets, but that's the way we're going to pursue mm -hmm. with that. And uh, the filler is a Nicaraguan uh, leaf that we're not saying if it's a Corojo, if it's a 
we're just keeping this plan completely separate, pretty much. Yep. You know, we we t we talk to a lot of people, you know, on the you know on the importance of the binder, and and I've talked a lot of people will keep their binder a secret. Um, because it's such an important part of the blend. Would you would you agree with that? Everyone talks about the wrapper, but the binder sometimes is we're hearing more and more is equally as important. Yeah, I would say every leaf in your blend is important. The binder plays a role in the blend. Uh, you want to make sure that you pair your binder with your wrapper, and 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 and, and it burns well, and uh, it gives you what you're looking for. But yeah, the binder is very important. It is important. I agree with you on that one. Yeah, and a lot of blending seminars, actually, you don't, um, you know, the role of the different filler tobaccos <coughs> um, into individual cigars, um, but they won't do the binder. But I, I, I agree with both you and Will. You know, the binder is definitely an important component. Um, I believe flavor-wise uh, as well. And you see some people using some very interesting binders. For you, Santana, though, my question is, uh, coming to market with a Lancero, how have you found that has done in the market? Have you found that it's very specific to certain areas and certain shops? Uh, has it gained kind of mass appeal, or does it appeal more to, like, the stogie geeks kind of kind of crowd? No, the Lancero is a traditional Vitola. Uh, I mean, we all know the Cohiba Lancero was mm -hmm. one of the, I mean, Cohiba initially released their brand with the Lancero size. Hmm. So uh, it's been on for a while, but now it's, it's gaining a lot of popularity. Uh, I always wanted to have a Lancero because of my father. My father is a Lancero smoker. He's always been in Cuba. So... Uh, for me, it's an honor to have the Lancero on my line. But uh, as far as consumption, they're gaining a lot of consumption uh, uh, of this Lancero when they're well made. Uh, you gotta be careful with the Lanceros, you know. Uh, you gotta use a specific wrapper. You cannot use a strong ground wrapper, that's, that's wrong. Uh, it's a very selective Vitola. It's very difficult to roll. Uh, it can, I mean, the filler can be twisted very easily and the cigar will not draw, uh, you know, the cigar has to be a certain weight for a proper drawing. You have to age him well. It's a very long cigar, and it takes a lot more to dry and age because it's very long. Even though it's a 38 ring gauge, uh, people think because it's less tobacco in it, it will dry faster. That's not the case, and it will age faster. That's not the case either, so... I, I agree, Santana. You know, smoking a lot of different size cigars, I found that smoking the longer cigars, regardless of ring gauge, if they're not perfectly constructed uh, and, and perfectly kind of balanced with the different tobaccos in terms of combustion, that it can be a very, it can be kind of a chore to smoke uh, and it can be difficult because that, you know, the air has to travel so long from where the cigar is lit that keeping that cigar lit can be uh, can be a challenge. So, no, that's definitely a, a, that's a great point that I don't think we've really talked about on the show before. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Well, Linda should know that you should test, I mean, all the combustion of every leaf that you're going to put on that blend. Mm -hmm. We know that most of the Lijeros, they don't, uh, you know, they have poor combustion on it. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna find the right embiso or the right binder or the right circle so you can have the right combustion on your blend. But you know, longer cigars, they uh they, you know is they, they maybe they're tricky. They, they it's not easy. It's more difficult to make. Mm hmm Certainly. Will more questions for Santana? Yeah, one of uh one line I wanna talk about and it's become one of my favorites is La Forte. Santana, can you talk a little about the La Forte line? Yeah, the La Forte line is a limited line, too, because that's a box for eight. <clears throat> this line, we only making uh, 24,000 sticks every year in four sizes. Uh, we sold about 2014, yes, so now we're packaging 2015. This line 
is a rotation of a, a, a one year aging. Sometimes taking more because the cigar uh, takes a while to be sold, but now they're moving faster. Uh, this is a, um, a dually hero blend. Uh, it's a medium plus. I would say it's, it's not farming for some people, it can be a super full body. For me, it's a medium plus. Uh, you know, kind of like a medium to almost a full. And uh, it's very unique because we're using this uh, uh, Criollo Especial, which is a wrapper that we're growing up there in the mounds. And we had this wrapper age for these cigars. And we're selecting the wrapper on it. We want this Rosado. Uh, if you see the Imperial Glass Vintage line, you're going to find uh, more Maduros on that wrapper. But this particular line has this prime that we're using, which is a central border, which is more, uh, uh, more like a Rosado kind of shape. And it's very unique. So, yeah, we're going to keep it 2,000 boxes a year. We're going to number the boxes, uh, boxes of 12. And that's it. So that came out last year. So this is the second. Have you already done the second run of that yet? Yeah. Oh yes, yes. We have 2016 already made in 2014. Yes, they aged. So yeah, they, they're aging. Okay, so yeah, but they've already made it to market. Is what I was asking. Yeah, the plan is a year rotation, but they, like I said, they're taking a lot longer because yeah. they they selling very slow, you know. Yeah. Which Can is fast. Yeah. They're gonna age more. Can you hold up the box again? Oh, uh, open. I want to just kind of make a point. You want to open it? Yeah, hold it up. Is it, can you open it? Hold it up high, Santana. If you can, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's got... I don't know if you could pull the, the cedar up. I just wanted to show the audience the packaging inside. Because I'm going to say, no one really packages cigars like you do. Just there's so much... Um, you know, love and care put into that, and you see it in every box. It's just absolutely. He's, he's, gonna, he's gonna give me a, a full box. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so you see, you see this uh, uh, seal? Yeah. We seal. Uh, we don't we don't seal it. We seal it when we sell it. I mean, when the order comes in, then we put that stripe on because we want to inspect it that everything is fine again. You know, just me being final right, final right. I said final right, final right. Paranoid. Paranoid, yeah. You see, this, this one doesn't have this right. Yeah. So. It's just as uh, I just love the presentation of these cigars. Can you hold it just a little higher? Yeah, and you could just see that. Um, you put a lot of time and, and care into that. Is that something that you're passionate about packaging? It seems like you are. Yeah, I mean. I mean, I, I, I have a lot of respect for the traditions of our Cuban, you know, way of doing things. Uh, I mean, this cedar alone, on these boxes, they age cedar. Uh, it's 10 years old, you know. It's just, it smells fantastic. Oh, I know. I was going to say that because I've opened the box of those, and, and that's a, it's just fantastic when you get that, exactly. Yeah, the uh, the aging process on these cigars are incredible. When they get to that box and they get to be there for a year, oh my goodness, they get to, into a different dimension. They just get different dimensions. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, me, uh, since I uh, worked in uh, Cuba Tobacco in the box industry, I mean, making boxes for them, uh, back in the day, uh, in Havana, uh, I'm very uh, sensitive about my packaging. Uh, uh, so you can see that box, if you lift it and you lift the weight on it, uh, usually it's heavier because it's made in China and it's not a cedar box. It's laminated. In my case, uh, I went all the way and I put about eight layers of lacquer and you name it. Mm -hmm. Because we want to seal this cedar so we can present it that way. It's a high lacquer piano box and it's all cedar. 
pot on top and it's solid. It's not play wood, it's not laminated, it's a complete work of art. It's the number one box in the world being cedar, all over, solid, with lacquer piano. That one, I take it with me, it's gonna be on my books, or in my book. I mean, I expect people to recognize it, these people don't know what I'm talking about, but it's gonna be on my books for sure. The same with the Lancero box. The Lancero box is a, la is a high lacquer piano, with, I mean, with pearl. This is the first time everybody used pearl on cedar, high lacquer. So, you know, I'm, I'm fascinated with all these developments. And, and that's the way I just want to do some of the lines. Not all the lines are going to be like this, but a few lines I want to have on my books. Just like that. Luxury with value. Not luxury with, with no value. Values on the wood is also going to be aging very well and very good. They're going to benefit from that wood. And it's going to be a fantastic profile from the flavors. And people are going to enjoy that. That I guarantee you. Yeah, Santana, I, I totally hear what you're saying there. There are um, select manufacturers where I would never remove the cigars from the boxes and put them in something else. I would always take the box and put it in my humidor. And it sounds like people should do that uh, with your cigars. As you say, they'll, they'll age better in the box. That's kind of the way they, they are meant to be maintained in people's humidors. And that's really cool. Yeah. Um, I, yep. I mean, you have to understand one thing. Cigars is all about conditions. How do you maintain them? How do you age them? That's the trick. That is the secret. What kind of conditions they have? You know, what are they going to benefit from? You know, these tobaccos, they benefit from time, but you got to see them in something that they benefit from. Mm -hmm. It's all about how you maintain them, what kind of humidity you put them on, uh, what kind of packaging you use. If you see, uh, if you read the books of the biggest collectors in the world, the Chinese guy, uh, you see his theories of packaging. Packaging is important for cigars. That's one of the key points of cigar making, the packaging. And lately, nobody's paying attention to that. Cigars need to benefit from something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you get a lot of, you, you talked about the laminated boxes, and I'm not trying to knock anyone else, but, you know, there's a difference with your, I want, that's why I wanted to, you to talk about that because your boxes are are the cedar boxes they're not these these laminate ones that are going out which are nice looking but there's really something artistic when you see those boxes in person um you really hit the you'll really appreciate that yeah when i include the conditions of it the cellophane is one of the key points you know if yeah. you if you put your cigars in cellophane and you put the balcon on you know that they're not going to benefit that quick they will not benefit from that. You Absolutely. Like, you know. So um, I recommend everybody just punch the cello. If you don't know how to punch it, call me. You're going to be punching cellos for people if you... you know. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll volunteer to punch them cello for you anytime. <laughs> <laughs> well, any uh, final questions for Santana? Um, The last one, you know, you recently just... um announced a distribution agreement with Espinosa Cigars. Um, just wanted to talk a little about, I know you have a long relationship with them. Um, um, how's that been going so far? It is going really well. I'm, I'm happy with the results, which I knew. I knew, I knew um, you know, the outcome. Eric is a, uh, you know, he, besides being my friend, he's good at what he does. Very, very good. Yeah, and you know, and every the whole, agree. the whole team is is fantastic, and uh, uh, the reps. You know, everybody's just working at full speed. You know, I'm taking stuff very seriously, which I'm very happy with that result. Yeah, you know, one thing I love about a lot of the the folks who are tied in with Espinosa is you all kind of are like this family. And you, yes, you all have your different brands, but you all, I, I noticed you guys come out to events, you support the others and you kind of, you don't step on the others at the events, it's their event. But 
I, I, it's a very unique model I've seen that that's, that goes on with that Espinosa family, and it, it, it's a great thing to see in the cigar industry to see that kind of camaraderie. Yeah, it's, a, it's an example of an example of uh, uh, a uh, a good relationship that you can take into the next level, which is business. Everybody knows that friendships and business are very complicated. But in our case, it's a um, it's a blessing. You take a friendship, and that's a bless. You know, we we are blessed for that. And and Eric, I mean, that's the way you know we roll like that. I mean, you know, we're very open about our businesses, our friendship, and uh, we tell the truth to each other constantly, <laughs> more than we need to, and. Uh, that's what makes him. This is, 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 is an example of, 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 of uh, uh, um, saying, you know, it's a message out there that hey, you know, even though we're in the same business, it can't happen. Why not? Absolutely. Why not? Santana, are you ready to play five questions with the Stogie Geeks? Oh, good. Okay, I do. Uh, three words to describe yourself. Whew. Dedicated. Uh, extremely uh, 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 demanding. And, and extremely, I would say, um, loyal. Yeah. If you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? <laughs> Well, wow. you know, I would say a cigar cutter. I would, I, I would slide your fingers little by little. How about that? <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Uh, if you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? Oof. Aging process. The aging process. In the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? I go first. Choose two celebrities to be your parents. Oof. Al Pacino. Al Pacino. Excellent. Santana, thank you so much for your support, and thank you so much for appearing on the Stogie Geek Show. Okay, guys. Hey, thank you, Santana. I've been kind of slow because it's late. Believe me, my energy goes from 9 to 7 p.m. <laughs> down about 9 something. I hear you. Too early, and uh, my mind will, you know, will be a lot of more sharp, and then we can amplify these subjects about growing, uh, aging, uh, and, you know, a lot of this stuff. Okay, I promise you that. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll have to have you back on the show at a more reasonable time because I tell you what, we Will and I suffer from the same thing. So yeah, we'll do that. We could, we have ways of doing that, Santana. So we could talk about that. Okay, for sure. Awesome. Thank you for inviting me, and you guys are authentic. I'm very uh, unique. Mr. Cooper, keep it up. You're doing very well. I like everything you write. Mr. Powell, you got the charisma to do this. Keep doing it. Thank you very much, Santana. We really appreciate that. Thanks for the kind words. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. With that, we're going to take a short break, come back, and do our debonair ideal segment for this evening. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 